Hello everyone, in this video, Apostle Joshua Selman will be sharing with us on the reasons why many don't get blessed even when men of God pray over their lives or declare over them. Stay connected as you listen and be blessed by this video production. God bless you. I've studied for many years by the privilege of God's grace, the supernatural and this spirit activity of God visiting his people and why in the midst of such mighty presence of God, others receive and others do not. And I've been able to put together by the spirit of God four major reasons. There are many, but in order of priority, I have found out from my life from the experience of scripture, from the life of mighty people who have commanded visitations across territories and nations, that there are four major reasons why although God shows up in the midst of his people, his people may not receive. Graces, dear friends, through the word of God, we have come to know not only the nature and attribute of our creator, but his magnificent plan for us. In the midst of our busy and fast-paced life, it becomes essential to nourish our souls and cultivate a vibrant spiritual life. Today, as we prepare to listen to this message that awaits you, the blessings of God are upon you. May you receive the wisdom to discern and understand beyond the spoken word. Kindly engage with us through the comment section below, sharing your thoughts and reflections. We encourage you to support our work by giving this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell to stay updated for all our next messages. In your new year, welcome to our channel. We are glad you joined us. Thanks for subscribing. May the grace of God be with you, guiding your part and illuminating your heart. Amen. John chapter 1 from verse 11. John puts it beautifully. He says he came unto his own and his own received him not. It is possible that God comes. The he there can be any expression of God. His wisdom came to his own. His power came to his own. His favor came to his own. Are we together? His lifting came to his own. Jesus the way came to his own. Jesus the truth came to his own. Jesus the life came to his own. The deliverer came to his own. But they received him not. Then the next verse says, But as many as received him. Unfortunately, as many. Doesn't leave a number. But it tells you there are chances that there are people who will still not receive. Even though he came. One thing is a fact from this scripture. He came. He came. His power came. His healing came. Our precious people led us through that song. That the God of signs and wonders, the Savior, the Redeemer, that he would come and make manifest his presence. He's heard it like he heard Jabez. But whether or not you will receive tonight will be dependent on these reasons. Are you ready? Number one. The first reason why many do not receive in an atmosphere like this is lack of expectation lack of expectation there is no dis definition of their desired expectation this is very important luke 18 let's hurry up luke 18 from verse 40 to 43 lack of expectation believers just stroll into his presence carelessly hoping that at least i'm here whatever god wants to do with me and while that is sincere that is not enough there must be a definition to your desired expectation. Talking about blind Bartimaeus, Jesus is passing through the Jericho now. That would be his last time passing that street. And Jesus stood and commanded him, the him being blind Bartimaeus, to be brought to him. And when he was come near, he asked him, 41, saying, What will thou that I shall do unto you? Look up, please. This would sound silly, almost irresponsible and sarcastic of Jesus. You would think that because a man were blind and he was shouting, have mercy on me. He did not define what he wanted. Have mercy on me means let me get your sympathy. It doesn't mean that he has defined his expectation. Jesus taught us a profound lesson here. He comes to the man. You ask for my sympathy. I am here available to do all 
I'm ready to give you a visitation. What do you want? And the man now zoomed down. He said that I may receive my sight. I've taught you here. Remember our, our teaching on the seeing eye? He never said that I may see. Because his eyes were open. It's just that he was not seeing. The problem was not lack of eyes. The problem was not even lack of the movement of eyes. Is that he did not have sight. Your eyes can be open, yet you are not seeing. Jesus never said, see. Look at how Jesus answers. Jesus said unto him, you ask to receive your sight. I won't give you something else. I will give you consistent with your expectation. Verbatim, receive thy sight. The man at gate beautiful. When he came, he was a man who was lame. But his expectation was to receive arms. Probably he had children, who knows? He had relatives, who knows? Or he wanted to take care of his immediate need. And he saw this gentleman, Peter and John, going to pray at the hour of prayer. And he stops them. And you know, hoping that he would get something. They said, look on us. And the Bible says he looked at them expecting to receive. But the Bible tells us that it, something, what is something? Expecting to receive something. Consistent with his arms. And Peter said, no, if I leave this man this way, silver and gold, let me just tell you straight. I'm sorry to disappoint your expectation. So Peter defines the something. He says, I know what you are looking for. Silver and gold. Sorry, we do not have it. However, we will not leave you in this state. There is something we have. And even though it is not yet your expectation, it is really what you need. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the real something you need is the ability to rise up and walk. This is a prophetic message. There is someone who is looking for silver and gold right now. But you are coming to people and they are telling you, no, we will not give you. And you are offended because what you really need is the ability to rise up and walk. Arise, shine, your light has come. Rise up and walk. This is not just to a man who is physically lame. Your ability to rise up. If you cannot rise up, you cannot walk. It takes courage to rise up. It takes discernment to rise up. It takes a revelation of who you are in Christ to rise up. There are many of you who have been sitting around the corridors of destiny, begging for arms, and God keeps sending people who you get disappointed by because the something you are expecting is silver and gold. And they are coming like I'm coming tonight. That beyond silver and gold, in my case, you will get both silver and gold in the name of Jesus. But beyond it beyond it there is an ability that is greater than silver and gold in the economy of heaven the ability to rise up and walk is greater than silver and gold you can receive silver and gold but if you one of the major characteristic of living things is movement and motion and silver and gold does not have the power on its own to create motion the value of silver and gold is that you can rise up and walk and use it. You came here asking for something. You are fastening your eyes on me, expecting to receive. For others, you are just praying and saying, Lord, something that meets my immediate need. And the apostle is saying, no, God is too mindful. He's mindful of your today, your tomorrow and next. Unfortunately, I do not have that which will meet your immediate need. But there is something I can give you, an ability. And that comes in the name of Jesus. Not stored in a bank, not stored in a marketplace. You don't find it in a mall. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of Nazareth, he said, rise up and walk. Someone prophesy, say, rise up. You are speaking to yourself, say, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk means rise up and excel. Rise up and walk means shake yourself from the limitations of yesterday and be able to stand up and start making constructive progress. Rise up and walk means rejoice not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, yet I will rise again. The Bible says the righteous fall at seven times. Listen to me, let me tell you, the ability to rise up and walk is proof of courage, audacity. Rise up after a loss. Rise up after pain. Rise up after limitations. Rise up and walk. Such as I have. Men can have the ability to make others rise up and walk. This is powerful. Men can have the ability in the name of Jesus to cause nations to rise up and walk. 
ministries to rise up and walk businesses to rise up and walk that everywhere you see lameness don't just think silver and gold remember there is an ability within your spirit and you can speak to systems to structures to men to families to destinies let me prophesy to someone in the name of jesus the one who gave gifts to men i speak to you where you are being at a beautiful gate with an ugly situation tonight rise up and walk rise up and walk rise up and walk rise up and excel rise up and walk in the name of jesus christ please be seated lack of expectation you must define your desire tonight don't come in carelessly and say lord as you are touching others touch me what does touch me mean because what touch me means in the mind of god is not what he means and because he's not the one who has the need he gives you the liberty mark eleven twenty four. and what things soever ye desire name them give them a frame when you pray you see that that means one of the laws of prayer is creativity and imagination vision must be part of what guides your effective prayer if there is no vision your prayer will be amiss what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them what is the them the them that is already defined the them already defined every time people came to jesus with a clear definition of their expectation whether it was a centurion son or to, that their eyes be open or to rise up from you know their state of lameness with palsy jesus responded immediately that is the reason why we guide people by allowing you to come with prayer requests you see that now Prayer request is God's way of helping to coordinate your expectation, to give it definition, to give it form, to help to guide you. So that when you write five, six things, you are writing it using your mind, you are writing it. And, and listen, there is intelligence. The Bible says watch and pray. The word watch there does not just mean be vigilant. It means let your mind be an active part of that process. Hallelujah lack of expectation so whilst you are seated here right now it does not take long for the power of god to visit people but make sure you frame your expectation and for those who are following across the globe doesn't matter what nation what region you can begin to pen down your expectations not just to send them to us but so that you will be a witness that you will take them one by one the bible says oh taste and see i told you it's a banquet you can taste the goodness of god not just believe and expect you can taste there is a frame to it your life can be a witness that God is good. Number one, let's hurry up. Why do many fail to receive, even in the midst of such an atmosphere, lack of expectation? Can I give you number two? Lack of sensitivity. Lack of sensitivity. Their word comes. Only God knows how many people's words has come. For someone that rise up and walk, I said, that is your miracle service word. That's it. You've been like a lame man sitting at gate, beautiful. And God is speaking to you tonight, rise up. Rise up takes courage. Rise up takes light. Rise up takes the fortitude to stand alone. Rise up takes the grace, the ability to be controversial until your life proves otherwise. Rise up and walk. Lack of sensitivity. Their word comes but they are not sensitive and they are distracted in luke chapter 19 and verse 44 we'll just jump to 44 for the sake of time but the context starts from 40. jesus wept over jerusalem and said oh jerusalem jerusalem it says if only thou had known even in this thy day the things that pertain unto your peace it says but they are hid from your eyes and then he makes a very interesting statement go to 44 please it says and shall lay ye even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another for the simple reason all of the calamities that were explained in 43 and the early part of 44 will come simply because thou knowest not the time of your visitation the time 
thou shall arise, he says, and have mercy upon Zion. He says, because the time to favor her, yea, the set time, the word set time there is the word kairos, the opportune time, the time that has coincided with God's predeterminate counsel. Can I tell you, there are seasons in life and destiny where the waters of destiny is steered. And the Bible says, whoever was the first, it was about sensitivity. There were no sentiments to it. Nobody's name was put that this year you will be the one to walk. There were many people around Bethesda, the lame, the halt, all kinds of people. The Bible says they were waiting for the steering of the water. Two information the Bible does not give. The exact day the angel comes does not tell us. It just know that he's coming and be prepared. Take sensitivity. There were many people who had the potential to receive Elijah's mantle. Even those who were under his training, they were students without sensitivity. But this man said, I discern that you are going. And he said, if you can see me, it takes sensitivity, ladies and gentlemen, to receive from God. Are you ready for number three? We have to rush. Can you imagine that all I'm giving you is a charge? Number three, are you ready? What is the third reason why many people do not receive from God? I call it manifesting conditional faith. Write it and I'll explain to you. Manifesting conditional faith. You can put condition in, um, what they call that thing? Huh? Bracket or whatever English people. Manifesting conditional faith, in quotes. What does that mean? God has to move in a certain way for you to believe he has moved. Conditional faith. Second Kings 5 verse 9. There are many people whose faith is tied to a certain way. If God does not move this way, I can't believe he's the one moving. Watch this. This is the story of Naaman in the house of Elisha. So Naaman came with his horses. Remember, the king now beckoned on him. Elijah, Elisha now said, okay, come to me. And the Bible says, so Naaman came with his horses, follow carefully, and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger, listen, and said, tell Naaman, go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again unto thee, and thou shalt be clean. As a result, the Bible says Naaman was wroth, he was angry. And went away. Why? He said, behold, I thought he would surely come out to me. And stand and call upon the name of his God. And strike his hand over the place to recover me. Verse 12. Are not Abana and Papa rivers in Damascus better than all of this? May I not go and wash in them? The Bible says he turned and went in a rage. Because when he came to the man of God, he expected, number one, that you come, ah, you are the Naaman, you are the great man. All right, let me tell you what to do. Turn around, do this, do that. You are a noble man. You can't go and wash in a dirty river, Jordan. There are clean ones that match your status. It's amazing how people come to God. There is a difference between having expectation and commanding God to behave in a way that suits your lust. Are we together now? Yes. Your expectation is the end result. The method is exclusively God's prerogative. You are not given the liberty to choose how God visits you. You are only given the liberty to set the vision that this is the expected picture. The moment you put God in a mold and say you must use this formula. For instance, there are people who if they never fall down, even if all the anointing in the world rests on their head, they, believe, they live disappointed. You see them as if they are returning from a funeral. God, I was here. I even sat in front. Whereas something mighty has landed upon their head. Are we together? God taught me many years ago. Yours is to believe me. Allow me to choose the method. There are many factors that guide God's choosing the method. Number one is your faith level. Number two, the human vessels available to partner with prophecy. They, they can alter the way God acts. For instance, if God's desire is that by tomorrow, if I prophesy to you that by this time tomorrow, someone will give you a job, 
Watch this. I've taught you how prophecy works. The spirit of wisdom goes around looking for the human vessel that will come into partnership with that word. I can choose as an act of my volition. Are we together now? To refuse to partner with God. God will have, that is the reason why the spirit of wisdom is there. He will keep using different strategies. The most important thing is that his word will not return to him void. Mary had a right to reject. She would have said, listen, I don't want any trouble. I'm preparing for my wedding. Don't bring trouble. You are a wicked angel. You waited until I'm planning for wedding. You now appear and you want to disrupt my life. Carry your trouble and get out of this house. He would have respected her and he would have left. The mother of Jesus would have been called something else. But for sure, that, that incarnation would have happened. Are we together? This is very powerful. Tonight, don't give God any conditions to have to move through a formula. Lord, the most important thing is that causes and yokes must get out of my family. How that will happen this night... Lord, I do not know. If it means shouting, I will shout. If it means lifting my hands, I will lift. Sometimes, Peter did not even know when Satan entered him. He was just smiling. And Jesus said, do you know that Satan has finished his business with you? I had to pray for you. And yet, he never saw Jesus praying. And Jesus said, I was praying all the while. Lord, no matter how you want to move in my life and my family, go ahead. The most important thing is that this yoke must be lifted. The most important thing is that doors will come. There are many of us, the moment we say, may God lift you, an uncle comes to your mind. You have forced God to bring that breakthrough through that uncle. And there are some of you harassing every wealthy person because you have this, this, this poor understanding. The moment they say receive in your mind, maybe even in your prayer request. Now, number one was his name. The name and the name of his wife. Father, this night they will not sleep. No, that's not how a believer works. Listen, you will keep disappointing yourself again and again. There are 8 billion people on earth. Not everybody will tell God no. There are people who are yielded, including Cyrus's. And if they decide to refuse, as the owner of his property called man, he's called the father of spirits. He can manipulate any spirit, including that of Pharaoh, to give you gold. Pharaoh that will not give them straw, now suddenly gives them gold. To tell you that he did not do it by his mind. He was under an influence. When they left, he said, what have I done? I carried the entire treasure of Egypt. Chase them and receive it back. God for you. You would have been blessed since. If you said, God, by your wisdom, my ways are not your ways. Is that not what he told you? You have been forcing God walk through my ways. Lord, it is civil defense. It is oil and gas. Because with my little mind, I know that is the only way I can eat and give some of my relatives the remaining. And God says, listen, it is be, I can connect you to men. Don't force God and say, you must give me a job in NMPC. You must give me a job with Shell. You must give me a job. I must work with UN. Hallelujah. And sometimes you will not get certain blessings because you do not have the spiritual stamina to stand the attacks that come with the blessing you are asking God to give you. Every realm of reality has, it has a spiritual stamina, a requirement of stamina to be ushered into that realm. Hallelujah. By the time you get to a place that is the center of wizardry, that everybody in that place is in some cult or somewhere, and now you are a passive, careless Christian, prayer almost zero, what study almost zero, and you are saying, God, bring me in the midst of those occultists. In fact, let me be a PA to the director. God says, I love you too much. I love you too much. It's compassion, not an attack. Because God will look at you and look at your mother praying and say, no, I can't do this to this woman. Are we learning? Number four. Huh. The fourth reason. Why many believers do not receive. Are you ready? Refusal to acknowledge and glorify God through thanksgiving and testimonies. The reason why many believers do not receive or do not sustain what they receive 
is the refusal to acknowledge God and to glorify him through thanksgiving and testimonies. Psalm 22, 22. Psalm 22, 22. I will declare thy name unto my brethren, it says. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Not just in my room. In the midst of the congregation, I will announce to them. You see, let me tell you this. Sometimes, when we have the liberty of time, and people are healed or people are delivered and we ask people to come forward to testify it achieves many reasons attesting to the fact that the man of god is anointed is the least of the reasons you need to know that it is a spiritual system the bible says 10 people jesus gave an instruction to 10 lepers is that in your bible and he was on his way passing and yet he remained there he stood there and the bible says only one came to give thanks when they saw that they were healed, only one came and Jesus said, he didn't even say, oh, thank you, you have done well. He said, were there not ten of you? Where are the remaining nine? And the Bible says only one was made whole, even though the rest were healed. Are we together? It is beyond a man of God. There are certain levels of lifting when God has lifted you. Proving certain points of anointing and power is unnecessary again. Are we together now? With all due respect and with all humility, trying to prove whether God is in this house or whether we're anointed is childishness. God has already stamped a signature that can never be erased. Are we together now? So when you ask people to come, when you ask people to testify, you are, it's not just proving that the man of God is anointed. Number one, you are letting the nation see like we always sing. That Jesus is the same yesterday, today. There is an unbeliever depending on that performance, that miracle. And then number two, it helps to concretize it in the life of the recipient that God is truly at work and finally seals that miracle. Have this at the back of your mind. There are many of you today, what was glory was turned to shame because when God did it or when it started, you felt that I cannot testify. No, I'm too big. Truly, the pain has left. My God, this thing he said. So the pain has gone. I, I can't feel the growth again. Or this one, I can now move my neck. But can I come out? It's too far. I'm seated at the back at the overflow. Or I'm seated at the basement or anywhere. And whilst you are doing all of that, God is watching you. And then you give room. Because every time spirits leave men, they intend to return. Is it not in your Bible? They intend to return. One way we come into fullness is through thanksgiving. The fullness of anything is achieved through gratitude and thanksgiving. Anything God gives you and it is not yet in his fullness, you can complete that equation and move his hand. Let the people praise thee and he says, the earth shall yield his increase and God, even our God, will bless us. God, you gave me tea. Where is the bread? And God says, what are you talking about? It is tea and bread you promised me. And God will say, that bread is still far from you. Because you cannot say thank you for tea. Someone, the tea is not there. Just because the ingredients are there, you begin to dance and roll. And say that the ingredients are there means that I can make the tea. And while he's saying that, God says, I will not only give you tea and bread. I will give you a factory that now makes it so you can bless others. Believe what I'm telling you. Your rent has not come. But how about the 50,000 someone gave you? It's too small now. Can I tell God, thank you because of 50,000? And God says, 50,000. Whereas that's somebody's prayer request. Number one, self. All right. So if you cannot, if you are too big to give me thanks because you think it is too small, then you rather remain at that level. Is the reason why we thank God for any and every miracle in this place. You see, one major problem with ministries that experience the supernatural is that they get so, too used to so, what we call notable miracles. And once a miracle is not outstanding, like rising from the wheelchair, throwing a crutch, a blind eye, visibly blind, opening, and something, once you hear someone say, oh, I can now move, you just clap carelessly, like I just have to do it so that God will not, can, the Bible says, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his hair anything that god does is deserving of my gratitude there are times i go to minister and almost all the testimonies are maybe just 
corrective things nothing necessarily notable i celebrate god in that meeting as if it was dead people that came back to life are we together yeah i'm expecting a job tomorrow oh the job did not come but an old friend called me we had a meaningful discussion that planted hope in my mind father thank you because even though this that i expect is not here i am grateful because i already see your hand moving someone shout thank you jesus let the devil hear you say thank you jesus thank you jesus, thank you, jesus.